I trust that you have enjoyed the singing today. Now, let us take a look in the book. If you have your Bible and you would like to read along with me, turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter number 14. The Gospel of John, chapter number 14. And as we look at verse number 3, we find these words, and these are the words of Jesus Christ. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This is talking about the rapture of the church. Now, Jesus Christ has been gone a little over 2,000 years. And he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Notice the person, I. Well, in John chapter 1, verse 1, listen to these words of Jesus. In the beginning was the word. That word is logos. And the Logos, the Word, was with God, and the Word was God. You see, Jesus Christ and God are one and the same. Now, as we look at this, it says in verse number 14, and the, wor and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. In other words, God left the throne of heaven and came down to this low ground of sin and sorrow, birthed in a virgin womb. And walked across the land that he had created and died on a cross from a tree that he had grown. Dear friend, he walked among us. It says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. In other words, John says we saw his glory, his Shekinah. We witnessed all of this. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. May I say today, Jesus Christ is truth. He is the light. Now, as we look very carefully, it says, I, the person, where I will, and that's the power. You see, it is by his will, his spoken word. He is all powerful. God can speak, and what he speaks happens. He spoke and spoke the worlds into existence, the universes. They stay in their place just like he told them to do. He's created earth, made it a beautiful place. He made man and placed it in the garden, but man sinned. But you see, Jesus Christ knew there must be a plan of redemption, and he himself was going to be the propitiation, the shedding of blood to redeem Adam and Eve and all of the descendants that looked to Jesus Christ and trust in Jesus Christ who died on Calvary's cross for their sin. He is building a family. It's a large family. And I'm glad one day we're going to all be together in this wonderful place that I'm speaking about today, heaven. It says, uh, he says, I will, and we see the power, and he also says that I will come again, and that's the promise. May I say, dear friend, he says, I will come again. Now, I know there are skeptics, I know there are doubters. I know there are rejectors. There are those who ridicule and make fun and say that this is a fairy tale that could never, could never happen. But dear friend, just watch. It's going to take place. And I want to assure you it's not far down the road. Now, I'm not a date setter. This man a few days back set a particular time. And many people have been deceived or was deceived. And now they're saying, well, if he missed it, can the others be wrong? May I say, dear friend, man is wrong. But this book is never, never wrong. This is the word of God. And he says, I will come again. Notice the promise. He says, I will. And he also says, and receive you unto myself. That's the people. All who are born again. Oh, listen, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Isn't it a good day to be a Christian? Having everlasting life, never having to worry about a place called hell other than trying to keep our friends and our loved ones, our family, out of that place of torment. For time and eternity, there will be no time, actually, for all eternity. 
This is going to be an awful place. You don't want to go there. You say, now, Brother Melvin, I don't believe that. Dear friend, it doesn't matter what you believe. God said it. That settles it. It's factual. It's truth. And God's word does not lie. Notice here. He says, where I am. Now, that's the place. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Well, not just a little cabin on the hillside, but a mansion. Can you imagine a place being prepared for almost 2,000 years? How beautiful it must be. And go to the book of Revelation. And God gives us a little peek into the beauty and the blessed place that heaven is. Well, he didn't tell us all about it because, you see, our finite mind could not grasp the reality of what heaven really looks like. It's going to be beyond description. We don't have words to describe the beauty of this place called heaven. That's the abode of the believers. That's the place of the church, the Old Testament saints, tribulation saints, dear friend, and we are going to be in the presence of Almighty God forever, forever. Isn't it going to be wonderful? Oh, we have all these hardships, tribulations, trials all around us. I see moms who are grieving over their sons and daughters. I see dads who are grieving over their family and not being able to support them like he would like to. I see homes breaking up. I see a sin on every hand. I see all these things, those tragic things that are happening in this world now. But all these things are going to be passed away one day. Oh, all tears will be wiped from our eyes. Death will be conquered. Dear friend, because there is a place called heaven. And you only get there by an invitation. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. May I say, dear friend, you need to know that you're saved today. You need to know this Jesus today. You need to know that you have him living in your heart. Because time's running out for the church dispensation now, I know that there are those that say, well, this earth's coming to an end. There's, it's just going to explode one of these days, and it's all going to be over. Scientists even tell us that. But they say about 2 billion years from down the road, 2 billion years from down the road. Dear friend, they don't know what they're talking about. You see, God made this place a habitation for his creation, and it will be restored to its pristine glory back before the fall of man. But dear friend, it's going to be an inhabited place. It's going to be a place of beauty beyond measure. And we're going to see some of that for 1,000 years during the millennial reign of Jesus Christ here on this earth. But as we look at this, this place is a place where I am. That's where I'm going to be. Heaven is where I'm going to be. And it says, there ye may be also, look very carefully, there ye may be also in verse number three. In other words, the plea is going out. Trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Don't wait too late because time's running out. The clock is ticking down minute by minute, second by second. We're seeing it all around us. These things that are mentioned in the Bible that we're seeing fulfilled in our own time. Now, don't listen to these doomsday sayers like the one that just predicted the other week. But you'd better listen to what God says in His Word because His Word is truth. His Word does not lie. God cannot lie. He is truth. You can take it to the bank. Is that real. Notice here very carefully. So he says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Hey, I will come again, he said. He's coming again. I just wonder if you're ready for his second appearing. That's the rapture of the church first for the believers, the saints that have died in, have died in Christ. 
and these which are alive and remain. But then he's coming back the second time. At the end of that seven years of tribulation, he's coming not for the church because we will be with him. He's coming to put down once and for all the rebellion of the Antichrist and the nations that have risen up against God's people, the Jews. He's coming to fight the battle of Armageddon. It's going to happen, dear friend. He says, if I go a place, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Heaven, heaven, heaven. And whether I go, you know the way you know. In other words, I've already told you where it's going to be. I've already told you that it's been prepared. And I've already given you the way. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, listen to me, dear friend. If you don't know this Jesus that I'm preaching about today, please don't wait too late, because you see, time is running out. You say, well, now, Brother Melvin, tell me once again, how that I can be introduced to this Jesus that you're preaching about today. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. With the mouth, confession is made. With the heart, repentance is, is given. You see, all you have to do is realize that you're not a Christian. You're not saved. You're not going to heaven. And as the Holy Spirit reveals that to your heart and knows that you're lost and reveals to you that you will not make heaven your home, in the condition you're in right now, all you have to do is get on your knees. Bow your head somewhere. You might be at the lunch table. You might be driving in an automobile. Wherever you might be right now, all you've got to do is just say, Lord Jesus Christ, I know that I was born in sin, but I don't want to die that way. Would you come into my heart and would you change me and make me a part of your great big family of God. Let me tell you, dear friend, when you pray that prayer, it's a done deal. Just as if you're already seated in the heavenly places. Because you're part of the family of God when you trust Jesus Christ to save you, birth you into his family. And that you become part of the great big family that he's coming back for, the bride. He's coming again. Are you ready? Don't wait too late. Now, until this same time next week, this is Brother Melvin Payne. I'm the pastor of West Side Baptist Church, and I'm saying goodbye, God bless you, and go with God.